everyone, and welcome to the SDG Zone at Tokyo. My name is Mary Popio, and I'm co-founder of Peace Culture Village, a nonprofit incorporated here in Japan. Sports have the power to promote values of human dignity, diversity, tolerance, and inclusion. Let's take a look at a video message from United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Dear friends, I'm proud to salute the world's Olympic athletes and I thank the people of Japan. The Olympic spirit brings out humanity's best, teamwork and solidarity, talent, tolerance. It inspires and unifies us in troubled times. We are all in mourning for those lost to the COVID-19 pandemic. Every athlete in Tokyo has overcome enormous obstacles and demonstrated great determination. If we bring that same energy to our global challenges, we can achieve anything. Peace, a clean, green, thriving planet, a better, more equal world rooted in supporting the most vulnerable and leaving no one behind. So let us race together to that future. The United Nations is honored to be your teammate every step of the way. Thank you. That was a message from Antonio Guterres, UN Secretary General. Sports have the power to promote values of human dignity, diversity, tolerance, and inclusion. And in this very first session of the SDG Zone at Tokyo, we would like to hear what this actually means and why we need to come together to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. To help us in our understanding, we are joined today by three very special guests you can see on our screen. Mr. Tsuyoshi Kitazawa, former national soccer team member and JICA official supporter, Ms. Izumi Nakamitsu, UN High Representative for Disarmament Affairs, and Mr. Poor Biel, UNHCR Goodwill Ambassador. A big thanks to our three distinguished speakers for joining us today and to all of you in the audience watching at home. Without further ado, let's get straight to our conversation. I'd like to start us off with a question for Mr. Kitazawa. As an athlete, you've competed against teams from around the world, including at international games like the World Cup and the Olympics. Can you tell us about a moment during those years when you strongly felt the power of sport? で、その Thank you so much for your answer. I know, um, at least in my hometown of Boston, Japanese athletes are very well known and loved. Um, so thank you so much for your comment. Um, so our next question is for Mr. Biel. It must have taken really incredible courage and resilience to overcome the challenges that eventually led you to flee your home country of South Sudan. How have sports supported and inspired you on your own journey to where you are today? Uh, it's what mean a lot to me, uh, being a refugee for 10 years and leaving my country while I was 10 years old. Uh, it become something that gave me a platform from the traumatized where I was being from coming from uh, a country whereby it has been in war for so long. Uh, being in a sport, it gave me a platform whereby I can use my voice to become a a voice to voiceless people who are young people who are living in refugee camp. Because, you know, minor people who are living in camp, they lose hope in life. Because they see there is no, there is no life in refugee camp wherever they are living. But when I involve myself, I become the role model to young people who are living in refugee camp. Not only me alone, 
uh, the people who involve themselves in this sport, they become role model to many people. And the young people, they see it become a motivation to them. So for me, sport, it becomes something that can change the life of the refugee who are living in the refugee camp because they can achieve something. They can overcome anything that they pass through, especially when they are coming from difficulty in life. It changed their life and it gave them platform. So for me, it is something that I take it as a motivation. From there, it gave me a platform to become a goodwill ambassador and become someone that can make refugees to feel that they can do something in their life. Thank you so much. Um, for everyone watching, Mr. Biel actually gave an excellent talk on this very topic at the Kakuma Refugee Camp in Kenya. So I highly encourage you all to look that up if you have the time. Thank you to both Mr. Kitazawa and Mr. Biel for sharing a bit about your personal stories and what sports mean to you. Next, I would like to broaden our conversation a bit with a question for Ms. Nakamitsu. Ms. Nakamitsu, you have an impressive track record when it comes to engaging in sustainable development and peace building efforts, both at UN headquarters and on the ground in various countries. How do you see the unique role of sport in promoting development and peace? Uh, first of all, it's a real pleasure to speak today, uh, be part of this, and a real honor to do so alongside such superhero uh, athletes. Um, and um, Mr. Kitazawa and uh, Mr. Biel have already spoken about sport as a um, connector and, and bridge builder, if you will, and the values that sport fosters. Those are mutual respect, teamwork, equality, and of course, fair play are very similar to those that help to promote development and peace and um, at the multilateral level, I think. Um, and in fact, the power of sport as an enabler of sustainable development is actually written into the 2030 agenda itself, which uh, recognizes the connection between sports and the promotion of tolerance and respect, as well as, of course, the empowerment of women and young people individuals and communities, and health, education, and social inclusion ob objectives. So the global reach and uh, universal appeal of sports are in and of themselves a catalyst for greater understanding and solidarity, I think, within and across borders, cultures, and communities. And uh, in many of the crisis and conflict settings in which I have worked, I have actually witnessed the power of sport in promoting healing and reconciliation, um, as well as, of course, helping communities, especially children and young people, uh, regain a sense of normality, I think. Uh, sport also embraces the concept of leave no one behind which of course is the main theme of the Agenda 2030 and our Sustainable Development Goals, and reminds us that equal rights, opportunity and protection must be afforded to all. So sport can serve as a platform, very powerful platform for advocacy and awareness raising to put those uh, furthest behind first through the actions that we pursue. So as such, sport plays a key role, I think, in gender equality as well as youth empowerment. You know, 40% of the world's population is under the age of 25. And young people have shown instrumental leadership in convincing people to engage in our efforts to advance empowerment um, and development and peace in all areas, like yourself, Mary. So I see this in my own line of work in multilateral disarmament, where I have the pri privilege of uh, interacting regularly with youth groups, uh, activists and champions uh, from around the world, which I really enjoy very much. So in conclusion, I believe very firmly that sport can be a great way to teach young people uh, the skills they need to succeed as peacemakers. Let's uh, explore creative ways to resolve problems and connect with each other to celebrate and reinforce inclusivity and diversity. 
Thank you so much, Ms. Nakamitsu, for always bringing up the role of young people. And speaking of youth, Mr. Kitazawa, you've dedicated much of your time to cultivating and mentoring young people through soccer. As a JICA official supporter, you also hold dialogues with those working to promote peace and development through education and sports. Can you tell us about a time when you witnessed the power of sports to empower the next generation to promote peace and sustainable development in their own countries? カンボジアで内戦後にまだスポーツがそんなに日常にないような状況の時にカンボジアに行かしてもらってまあこれから国づくりをしなければいけないっていうところで一番大事なことは人づくり人づくりだろうっていうことで若者対象にアカデミーを
where I come from in Kakuma refugee camp in Kenya, we have 19 different nationalities. But through his pod, we came together to unite ourselves through his pod. So I feel it is something that unite people and become something, bring solidarity to each of someone who has the role to play in his pod. Uh, as we know that promoting all those different value in his sport make a lot of change in young people's lives. So I believe his sport play a big role to change the world because being in the sport, it is whereby you feel safe and it gives a lot of platform to young people to have access to his sport facility, have safe environment because when you are in his sport, you have a safe environment. Also, it gives you education because when people are in his sport, they learn education too. It's not only running. They make friendship. They get where they can because this is whereby they feel safe and give them platform whereby they can go ahead to become a role model in different area. And they continue having connection with different people in the world. Thank you, Mr. Biel. And turning to once more the United Nations perspective, Ms. Nakamitsu, why do you think that solidarity is necessary when tackling global issues like disarmament, which can often seem quite distant from our lives. Yeah, so, um, you know, the United Nations Charter opens with the words, we the peoples. And as such, uh, of course, the pursuit of human security and well being uh, through international solidarity and cooperation have always stood at the center of the United Nations work. Um, but perhaps what few people know uh, is that, in fact, uh, the very first resolution of the uh, UN General Assembly, which was adopted on 24th of January um, 1946, uh, was actually on disarmament, specifically on the elimination of atomic bombs and uh, other weapons of mass destruction. And um, as you know, Mary, nuclear weapons remains to this day, uh, one of only two potentially existential threats to humankind, of course, alongside uh, climate change. And like climate activists, uh, many disarmament activists, notably the Hibakusha movement, have had a transformative impact on our world, I think, through their messages of solidarity, empathy, and cooperation. And um, their voices are indispensable voices in humanizing, if you will, what can feel for many like an abstract pursuit of disarmament and arms control. And of course, sustainable peace and development concern all peoples. The universal framework of the um, 2030 Agenda and Sustainable Development Goals really tells us that only through a holistic and unified approach can we succeed in achieving a peaceful and prosperous world for all? And I really believe that the COVID-19 pandemic has only underscored this notion. And that is why the General Assembly issued a declaration of solidarity last year. And that is why uh, also I believe that we need a renewed push at the international level to put people at the heart of what we define security. Thank you so much to Ms. Nakamitsu and to all of our speakers. We are nearing the end of our time together today. And I'd like to wrap up by asking the same question to all three of our guests, a question that many uh, of our audience members might be asking right now. And the question is, what would be your advice to those who are interested in doing something to make the world a better place? And if we could have each speaker give a one minute reply. Um, why don't we start with Mr. Kitazawa? 東京オリンピック、もちろん
思っているパッションを少しでも大会中に感じるっていうこともまた一つ新しい時代の始まりではないかなと思うのでそういったことを目撃しながらもそれをとそこで終わりにしないでそこをどうつなげていくかっていうことをしていくことが一番大事なことになるんではないかなというふうに思います。平和構築につながるんではないかなと思います。Thank you very much. Could we continue to Mr. Biel, please? People use their, their voice, your platform、uh, to advocate for the refugees. Uh, because these refugees are forced to flee from their country because of violence, persecution, and other stuff in life. So I encourage everyone to use your platform, your voice, to advocate for the refugee because these are our brothers, these are our sisters, these are our mother, these are our fathers, whereby they never wait to flee from their country.、Um, Encourage each of、uh, the viewers to join me and the UNHCR to add focus for millions of refugees. And especially during this time of the Tokyo Olympics, to support the Refugee Olympics team and to support the Paralympics、uh, team so that this is the team that we need to support so that it, to encourage them. To play their talent, to play their sport, whereby they can feel at home and be encouraged to, their, to do their best in whatever they can do in different sports. Thank you very much. And finally, we have Ms. Nakamitsu.、Um, my message is really believe in yourself and your ability to impact change. And I think many times people, especially young people, Are discouraged by a sense that、uh, their actions do not count. But this is not true. There are countless examples of transformative change brought about by social activism, especially by young people. So be bold and be courageous and be empathetic.、Um, think of the most vulnerable and have solidarity. Um, please recognize that for us to succeed as individuals, we must succeed together. And,、um, and I think this is the spirit of the Agenda 2030. And also, I think it is the spirit of sportsmanship. Thank you very much. Well, I'd like to give one final thank you to our wonderful guest speakers.、Um, it has been such an honor and a privilege to hear from you about how sport can change the world and bring us closer to realizing the sustainable development goals. Just a reminder for everyone watching that this is only the first of six sessions we'll be holding for this SDG Zone at Tokyo event. We have many more inspirational speakers and engaging conversations and important topics coming your way. So please do consider tuning in. Thank you so much.